Building is Miss Terry Walker. Uh huh. <laughs> Definitely from like the uh, I don't want to start off on a negative, but like from no. the era in UK music when people were getting signed and not really getting the dues. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So for those that don't know, give us a brief history into the musical life of mm-hmm. Terry Walker. Give me my chewing gum. Okay, Terry Walker. I got signed 2002, released 2003. I uh, got nominated for like 50,000 Mobos and the Mercury Music Prize, which was very good. First, my first single was featured Most Death. Then I had a you know one up single drawing board, so I was signed to Def Jam UK in um, London, and then after that I had another album out, didn't do too great. So then I got dropped after that. Whatever, keep it moving. <laughs> then I had an independent album out, and then I kind of just disappeared for a bit because I just wanted to kind of focus on being, you know, normal for a minute, not trying to be an artist. And then you know now I'm back. How would you compare how it is now to the era that you first came out, like when you were signed? Do you know what? I think now there's just more outlets for what we do. Do you know what I mean? There's more of a support for it. More kids want to be this way. You know, they're starting to see that this music actually starting to sell and um, they have to support it. There was, you know, there's something they couldn't stop it. Do you know what I mean? I think before they were trying to stop certain things being on TV or certain things being championed. And now, especially someone like Dizzy Rascal, who when I won, when I was nominated, he won the music mo- Mercury Music Prize that year and he's since that has just been climbing as he said Wiley as well do you know what I mean so I think it's I think it's brilliant really well the UK urban scene is doing quite well at the moment yeah. but then many might say the UK R&B soul scene yeah. is not doing as well which would would you say it's fair that you fit into that well do you know what definitely I don't think it's ever really done that well over here the UK R&B soul scene to be honest it's always been a thing where Ooh, someone's going in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't hear them on it. I don't even know how to do because the thing is, when I think of UK soul, I think of you know Omar, I think of Misha Paris. That's how that's what I'm thinking. And back then, since then, I don't think anyone has been that successful, like you know loose ends and all that. Do you know what I mean? Otherwise, it's there. But then I think people look to America more. And I think to be honest with you, growing up for me because I grew up in Germany, I was much more influenced to American music. And obviously, the few ones that did stick out were Soul to Soul and Young Disciples and Omar and Donny and Misha Paris. I love all those people. And um, do you know what I mean? So yeah, I think it's it's always been hard for us, especially for me over here. Yeah. Tell me why you- You've been spending a lot of time in America, you know, since your last album came out, right? You've got a relationship with Ski Beats. He's producing a lot of your album. Yeah. You know, you've got a label deal with um, Dame Dash. Blue Rock Records is what your album's coming out on, right? Yeah. So, like, explain what, what's been happening, like, over in America and stuff. Well, in America, it's crazy. I mean, the Blue Rock situation, it's more of a, it's a 50-50 deal. So, basically, we it's like a conjunction. It's, um, it's a venture deal with me and Dame. And that's what he does with every artist. He doesn't he doesn't like to kind of pin down people to, for them to feel like they can't go anywhere else. Do you know what I mean? Like, because, you, you know, you're always going to grow. And sometimes you might do something with someone and decide you want to do something else. And then you can't because you're stuck in a label. Do you know what I mean? So, um, and that's, that was the problem when I was signed first. There's certain things that I might want to do, but the label would see it as we need to sell records. So you need to do certain things. And I'm like, okay. And then obviously I ended up getting dropped. But me being so, me being in America has been amazing because I can just do me. I can do the music that I want to do. There's an audience for what I want to do. There's more people that probably look up to someone that looks like me and that talks about the things that I talk about. And um, it's just it's just refreshing for me to be over there, yeah. The haircut as well, man. Like the hair, <laughs> the style, it's looking very, very, you know, fresh. Really? Yeah, it's looking, it's looking good, you know. To those that are seeing uh, the visuals, but to those that are just hearing the audio, you'd have to look at the visuals. 
But like, what 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 made you cut the hair like that? Do you know what? After especially after I got dropped actually for Mercury, I need to stop saying getting dropped for Mercury because no one cares. Keeping it moving, that was back then. But you know, after I got released for my um, second album. I decided I just wanted to go natural, so I cut my hair off really short anyway. Mm-hmm. And since that, I've been I've been natural mm-hmm. anyway. So, but recently I just felt like I just want to be free. It just feels free to wake up in the morning and not have to do anything to ah, your hair. All your own hair, yeah. <laughs> On the sides. Well, in the middle, there's a bit of <laughs> extensions, but my hair is natural underneath, ah. and it's natural. See, so look natural. Mm. Don't start enough for you, yeah. <laughs> I just I just had to say, you but know, my hair, I'm gr- I'm growing it to this length anyway, so it's all gravy. Yeah. Mm. So like you you being like quite fortunate to yes. be working with such a stellar producer as yes. ski beach you know a veteran you know in the the u.s production game worked with like you know the likes of jay-z just to name a few you know what i mean yeah. like, i mean J- who else has he worked with he's worked with jay-z camp low most def gene gray jay jonica talib kwali oh, little kim uh he's worked oh he's worked with everyone Wiz khalifa cut yeah. i said currency already nicole ray me most definite as well yeah most def yeah so like, how, how does it feel to have someone like that that's actually handling your album do you know it's crazy because um obviously i'm a big big fan of him but i didn't really when i first met him i went to new york to kind of do a f- bit of work and i asked someone can i get in for some sessions and they said to me yeah ski and dame they're doing his project and at the, at the time i didn't know who ski was i'm not gonna lie mm. so i went into the session obviously hit it off with them straight away and it was amazing then it turns out that um after i finished working with him i looked him up and I found out that he did Camp Lowe's Luchini, mm. which turns out on my second album was This Is My Time, my sample, This Is My Time, but I didn't know that I'd done that. Mm-hmm. So, why are you sitting in the back? See, Ski Beats in the background trying to put me off. Anyway, um, <laughs> so when I found that out, I was like, oh my God, this man is incredible. He is a legend. And then after that, when I started working with him, I noticed how he looks at music the way I look at music. Everything that he does, I love. And everything that I do, he practically loves. So that's the reason why we work so well together. Mm. But, you know. Ski Beats is a legend. And I'll be thinking about the times you did me wrong and how I should 